Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and in this video I'm not going to rant, I want to talk about my love of work, especially hard work. A few weeks ago I was out in the building site and it was early morning, it was freezing cold, there was a wind, an icy wind blowing across a vast open space and quite honestly none of us wanted to be there. The timber was frozen together so I went and got a crowbar from the back of the van and as I walked out the dustbin men were dragging the wheelie bins across the icy pavement to their lorry and as one of them came along past me he dropped a few bits off the top of the bin onto the road and to my surprise he stopped and he diligently picked them all up and as I passed by him I said to him it's a hard game mate and he turned around with a big grin on his face and he said to me I love it and there he was perhaps maybe 23 years old up in the morning and at it with all the enthusiasm that youth gives you and he was enjoying himself doing what I consider to be a very essential but undervalued task i.e. emptying our bins. Good on you mate I said to him. To be honest I really wanted to give him a big hug but he probably would have misinterpreted that and punched me on the nose. And I just considered him to be a kindred spirit because although we're at opposite ends of our work in life I have also loved working. Now when I was 12 years old I got a job in a butcher shop after school and on Saturdays and for me it was a complete turning point in my life. It was a, a transformation because up to that point I'd been fairly disruptive at school and got quite a number of detentions and after that point when I got the job in the butcher shop I knew I had to be there or they would have sacked me so I was hell bent on getting out of that school just when the bell went sprinting up the road half a mile to the butcher shop taking off my school uniform putting on my butcher's overalls the whites and getting to work. The first job I had to do was make a cup of tea for everybody but this job gave me responsibility, it gave me independence, it gave me some money and more importantly than that and I even occasionally got my dad a nice rump steak which he would never have been able to afford if it had just been up to him, he wouldn't have indulged himself. For me to take home a nice juicy steak for my dad on a Saturday was just fantastic. It made me feel 10 foot tall. But perhaps more importantly than all that I actually I actually loved the work, I enjoyed it and I worked hard and on a Sunday I would take off with a local cycling club and we would do a run sometimes even up to a hundred miles in a day and that independence that I had with earning my own money meant that I could save up and I could take myself off on long cycling holidays. I went around Scotland, I went around Wales, I went around Cornwall at the age of 13. I could do all that because I had my own money. I wasn't asking anybody for anything. And that has kind of stuck with me through my life. So now at the grand old age of 71 I'm still working and I'm still riding my bike. But an increasing number of people see my age and they say to me when are you going to retire? In actual fact we even get nasty comments on the channel where people are saying you should be retired, you should get out of it, you're an embarrassment, you should be in a home and all that kind of thing. And I just think well maybe those people they're kind of they've got age phobia, maybe they look at me and they're scared of the fact that one day they'll be like me. But whatever the reason is we got to get used to the fact that there are going to be older people in the workplace and because we're living longer it stands the reason that we're going to be retiring later and later and later. So for all you people who don't like seeing old people in the workplace you're just going to have to get used to it and so long as I don't leave my Zimmer frame in the way of the fire exit you've really got nothing to complain about. We've never had a pension fund on the state pension. What happens is that the people are working pay into a pension, a national insurance which pays all the people who are retired. So it stands to reason that as you get fewer people who are working and you get more people who are retired there isn't enough money in those pension pots to keep paying out the old age pensioners. So what they've got to do is they've got to make sure that people have their own private pensions and they've also got to make sure that people retire at a later age. Now if you've got yourself a private pension that's a different matter because there is a fund but once again we're going to have to work longer, we're going to have to keep paying into that private pension because I've got friends who retired at the age of 65 and to be honest some of them are struggling because although they think they've built up a nice pension pot and they've got themselves an annuity that inflation rat is gnawing away at their pile. And although you may think you're going to go and play golf every day of your retirement you'll find that those 
those green fees start adding up and your meagre diminishing pension isn't quite enough to pay for it. So working for me is a pleasure but it's also something of a necessity because although I could probably scrape through on my pension if I chose to cash it in I wouldn't be able to afford the kind of holidays that I have and all those little luxuries like expensive restaurants that my wife just loves to go to would be beyond our means. So I'm quite happy to go on paying taxes, paying into my pension and just enjoying a few things in life that I otherwise wouldn't be able to. Now they say that when you stop you drop and in the case of my dad he worked till he was about 85 albeit part-time by that stage and he died at the age of 89. So there are now many people who are keen or at least willing to carry on working past what we call the retirement age. The only problem with that is that although we can put more money into our pensions to top that up and then you can take out 25% of that pension as a tax-free lump sum so it makes sense to be putting your money into that pension rather than just paying it in tax, there is an upper limit to this. And the Tory government did away with that upper limit because it was putting people off working quite honestly. A lot of high paid people who were needed in certain industries, the health service and other places, decided that it really wasn't worth them carrying on working. So the Tories scrapped that upper limit and allowed you to basically put in whatever you want into your pension with the thought that you would be able to take that out, 25% of it at least, as a tax free sum. But when the Labour government get in, and notice I said when and not if, they plan to reintroduce that cap immediately. Their idea is that they need the money, obviously, to pay for all the other things that they're going to give handouts. So they want to put that cap on. They want to discourage people from tucking away their money rather than paying it in tax. But they are going to make some exemptions. And those exemptions will be for public service workers. So they're people like high-ranking civil servants, consultants, and so on who will be enjoying that benefit of an unlimited cap on their pension money they can carry on squirreling it away. So that penalises the people in private industries if you like but of course you know Keir Starmer when he was director of public prosecutions he managed to squirrel in quite a bit of protected pension and he has declared that although that exists and he could benefit from this rule he has decided that he's not going to benefit from it he's going to somehow just give the money away to who? Who knows? But the important thing is he's going to say I'll make sure that I don't benefit from it. I'm going to make sure that I don't benefit from any legislation that I introduce. Mm, laudable. He'd be the first politician to do that for a long time. So that's all very well for those high paid public servants. But what does it do for that young lad who's emptying our bins? I mean, he's diligent, he works hard, he gets up every morning, but there's no way in the world that he is ever going to be able to afford to get himself a decent house. The odds are stacked against him and I can bet you that his name will never appear in the New Year's Honours list. And under those circumstances, you can't blame young people for thinking, do you know what, this work is over. We've all got choices and if work doesn't appeal to you I suppose you should have the option of not doing it. But you know just before the pandemic there were around 3 million people in this country on benefits. Now after the pandemic there are 5 million people. So that furlough scheme really did catch on. A lot of people have just lost their appetite for working. Now I find this quite hard to believe but apparently there are now 9 million people in this country who are of working age but no longer active in the jobs market. In other words they're not seeking employment. To be honest I have absolutely no idea how those people are supporting themselves. So all the time that we're looking abroad to fill these job vacancies while our young people sit on their hands that is a massive problem. Now that worries me not only because I realise that the benefits are going to work are financial but there are also health benefits. It's good for your physical wellness and it's also good for your mental health. It may well be that a great many people are no longer going to work because they're depressed and it may also be that they're depressed because they're not any longer going to work. It's a vicious downward spiral. So I'm not ashamed to say that I love work. I remember when I was a hog carrier, Brickies Labourer, did a couple of years on the building sites doing that every day, humping bricks, and I absolutely loved it. I was as fit as a fiddle, as brown as a berry, and I had plenty of money to spend in the pub at night.
Now I know it's some people's great ambition to win the lottery, but quite honestly for me, I find it depressing that people pin all their hopes and dreams on six numbers coming up on a Saturday night, which is why I don't do the lottery. I don't have that ambition and I'm not sure what I'd do with the money if I won. Now, just supposing that one of you kind viewers decided that you were going to try and jinx my life by buying me a lottery ticket and my numbers came up, I think it would destabilise me to a certain extent and I'd have to give it away rapidly. I probably wouldn't give it to my kids because I think that's quite harmful. And so who would I give it to? Some random stranger, maybe even you. So be nice to me.